Now, earlier, Qatar's foreign ministry released a statement saying it expresses deep regret at the resumption of Israeli aggression against Gaza following the end of the humanitarian pause. It added that negotiations to restore the ceasefire are still ongoing, but that the bombardment of Gaza is complicating mediation efforts. Let's bring in Hashem Ahelbara, who's following these negotiations very closely for us here in Doha. Hashem, we've heard the Israelis blame Hamas for the resumption of the war. Hamas blaming the Israelis for the collapse of, of the talks in extending the ceasefire. What are your Qatari sources telling you about what led to the breakdown? Well, basically, the problem yesterday was about the list of the Israeli captives. Uh, Hamas said that it has... It provided a list yesterday of the, the Israeli family mm -hmm. that was killed. The Bibas family. The Bibas family, mm -hmm. along with the father, four plus six, to be released in exchange for 30 Palestinians. And that this was rejected mm -hmm. by Israel. And that there was another option, which was basically a list of elderly Israelis to be exchanged for a list of elderly Palestinians. And then they were trying to look into different options, such as the release of uh, female uh, Israeli soldiers in exchange for Israeli Palestinians. But that would be a totally different um, well, issue, isn't it? I mean, because it would seem that Hamas would want to renegotiate the terms of, of the agreement that they said, were to get to the soldiers. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make some concession when it comes to the female soldiers. Mm -hmm. The male Israeli soldier is going to be different. Mm -hmm. um, but then they said throughout the negotiations yesterday night, the Israelis said, no, we want this list to be released. And that when they went through the list, they said these were female uh, female soldiers. They have to be part of a different criteria. Okay. So it was about criteria. It was about leverage, but it was about a great deal of uncertainty, uncertainty about how to move forward. Each party was trying to study the enemy's next move, mm -hmm. and this explains why the talks collapsed. So the talks have collapsed, but I understand that there's still a line of communication between the two sides, right? And the Qataris are trying to negotiate they are. They are. another extension. What, what's the likelihood? of reaching another extension, another agreement between it, Israel and Hamas? It, it will, is there it, a chance that we can there see? Is, they say there is a chance. Just the fact that they are ne negotiating as we speak is a good indication. No one is pulling out from the talks. However, the need to convince both Hamas and Israel on agreeing on a, on, on a list, and particularly when it comes to the list of the Israeli captives, to, as we speak, they are yet to finalize the list. If there is no list, then you won't have an agreement. Mm. Then the problem is, you see the escalation today. So this is a collapse of the ceasefire agreement. If it continues to further deteriorate, it will just diminish the chances whatsoever to extend the ceasefire. And this has been Qatar's strategic goal, right. which is just continue in, the, in this track to ensure that the ceasefire holds. If the ceasefire holds, it will be conducive to a comprehensive agreement. But there was always the risk that the ceasefire would collapse, right? I mean, there was a risk, sorry, that the war would resume because Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, had said, even if the ceasefire is working right now, we will go back to war, we will resume the war. And we're seeing the pictures of that happening right now mm -hmm. with intense Israeli bombardment across the Gaza Strip, the north and even the south, which is supposed to be safer. This, we seem to be in a new phase of this war. What mm -hmm. is it going to look like, you think? Is it going to be as intense as the first round? Do you know when, the negotiate, when, when they were into the thick of the negotiations about potential for a prolonged uh, uh, extension, uh, so came the statements from the Israelis on the need to destroy Hamas, but then official statements for the first time by his top Israeli officials, including the Prime Minister, on Israel determined to kill the leadership of, Hassan, uh, of Hamas all over the world. The timing of those statements when you are trying to salvage a political deal that could be conducive to a ceasefire left many grappling with what are, the Israeli, what, what are Israel's motives when it comes to the deal. Are they genuine? Do they want to go to a deal? Do they want to see a prolonged ceasefire? And then you have 
the resumption of the fighting. And this explains why when you see the statement from Qatar's Minister of Foreign Affairs, it says while they are determined to continue mediation, but they, they, but they condemn what they described as Israel's collective punishment of the Palestinians, the forcible displacement of the people and the continuing of the destruction of the civilian uh, property. Right. And so what should be should we be watching out for in the next few hours and next few days, Hashem, when it comes to the negotiations, the diplomacy? Tonight is going to be crucial. Mm. I mean, you have to come up with something positive. You cannot afford to have a second day of fighting because there might be uh, a tipping point where suddenly you won't have any control of this whole situation. And this is something that Qataris understand. There's been a momentum they've been building and they were hoping to capitalize on that momentum to, in, to convince the Americans in particular to put more pressure on Israel for this ceasefire to hold. If it continues and if the escalation continues for another day, it's going to be extremely difficult to return back to square one. Hashem, thank you very much for that. Hashem Ahel Barra joining us here in the studio.